What's up, guys? Today, we're taking to the skies for an epic adventure filled with fascinating facts about flights. From the mysterious curves of flight paths to the science behind airplane food, we're going to cover all the questions you've ever had about flying. So sit back, relax, and get ready to have your mind blown as we explore the wonders of the aviation world. And who knows? You might even impress your friends and family with all the interesting tidbits you learn along the way. So without further ado, let's get this party off the ground. Have you ever found yourself stuck on a long flight with nothing to do after you've watched all the movies you wanted to and still can't sleep? If so, you might have found yourself wondering about the flight path and why it seems so curved. Well, the answer is simple. The earth is round and maps are flat. So what looks like a straight path on a globe appears curved on a map. These paths called great circle routes are the shortest way to fly due to the curvature of the earth. But sometimes domestic flights have zigzagged routes that don't seem to have anything to do with the earth being round. That's because during peak travel times, there can be up to 5,000 planes in the sky at any given moment in the U.S. alone. And to ensure everyone's safety, planes must be separated by at least 2,000 feet vertically and 1,000 feet at lower altitudes. Airlines and air traffic controllers may adjust routes to account for weather and wind and other planes, even if it means taking a longer path. Another reason for zigzag routes is due to certain areas, such as the White House or Buckingham Palace, that prohibit aircraft from flying through their airspace. Planes must then fly around these areas, leading to less direct routes. Have you ever wondered why you can only use your phone in airplane mode on a flight? It's actually a law in the U.S. to prevent network interference, though there isn't much evidence to prove that your phone would actually interfere with the airplane's communication and navigation equipment. Many airlines now offer in-flight Wi-Fi so you can still stream your favorite content as you fly. Speaking of flying, have you ever noticed how loud airplanes can be, especially during takeoff? While it would be nice if airplanes had mufflers like cars do, it's not that simple. Jet engines generate thrust through a stream of fast-moving exhaust gases, and any kind of diffuser or muffler would decrease that thrust and waste the energy the engine is generating. The loudest sound during takeoff is actually the result of the hot, fast-moving exhaust gas reacting with the cool stationary air. And what about lightning strikes? Planes are designed to withstand them and are struck by lightning on average once a year. The electricity from the lightning is conducted through the plane's outer skin and into the ground, protecting the passengers and electronics inside. Finally, have you ever noticed that the left side of the plane always seems to have more windows? That's because the left side is typically the one closer to the terminal, and it's easier for passengers to see the gate and any delays while they're waiting to board. The right side, on the other hand, is typically closer to the wing and doesn't offer as good a view. Now, have you ever thought about why planes tilt when they turn? It's not because the pilots are showing off or trying to give you a thrill ride. It's because planes are designed to fly at a specific angle, called the bank angle, to turn. The bank angle is determined by the amount of lift the wings are generating and the speed of the plane. If the plane is flying too slowly or the wings aren't generating enough lift, the plane won't be able to turn as sharply. On the other hand, if the plane is flying too fast or the wings are generating too much lift, the plane could stall and lose altitude. The pilots must find the right balance to safely turn the plane. Is it just a coincidence that there are so many distinct kinds of clouds? Or have you ever wondered why that is? When warm, moist air rises into cooler air, clouds form, with a specific type of cloud depending on the initial air temperature and humidity. For instance, cirrus clouds, which are high and thin, form in cold and dry air, whereas cumulus clouds, which are low and puffy, form in warmer and more humid air. Clouds can be broken down into a few distinct types, each of which tells us something useful about the weather and climate. Now let me ask you this, have you ever given any thought to the reason why food on an airplane tastes differently than food on the ground? It's not because of differences in the food itself, rather it's due to the fact that our sense of taste can be influenced by a number of different things. For instance, the dry air in the cabin can cause our mucous membranes to become dehydrated, which can interfere with our ability to taste certain flavors. Additionally, the noise and vibration of the plane can serve as a distraction, making it more difficult for us to concentrate on the flavor of the food. And finally, shifts in atmospheric pressure can have an impact on our sense of smell, which in turn can have repercussions on our sense of taste. Therefore, even the food that you get on an airplane might be the same food that you would get on the ground. The way that you experience the flavor of the food might be slightly different. 
Finally, have you ever watched a sunrise or a sunset and noticed that the sky looks red during those times? The reason for this is because the atmosphere of the earth scatters the light that comes from the sun. When the sun is low in the sky, its light must travel through a greater portion of the earth's atmosphere before it can reach us. Light with shorter, redder wavelengths is more easily scattered than light with longer, bluer wavelengths because of the composition of the atmosphere. Because of this, the sky appears red, orange, and yellow, while the blue light is dispersed in all directions and does not reach our eyes. This gives the impression that the sky is on fire. The same thing takes place at sunrise and sunset, which is why the sky appears to be these colors at those times of the day. And that's a wrap on our journey of interesting facts about flights. I hope you've learned something new and enjoyed the ride. Who knows, maybe you'll be able to impress your friends and family with your newfound knowledge the next time you're stuck on a long flight with nothing to do. Maybe you can regale them with tales of the mysterious curves of flight paths or explain the science behind those loud noises during takeoff. Or perhaps you can share your newfound understanding of the different types of clouds or the reasons behind the peculiarities of airplane food. Whatever the case may be, I'm sure you'll be the hit of the in-flight party. <laughs>